powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. Janelle is off tonight. A state district court ruling will save Northwestern Energy customers more than $8 million. That ruling today upholds a previous Public Service Commission decision not to allow Northwestern to have its customers foot the bill for costs associated with the temporary shutdown of Colstrip Unit 4. At issue here, more than $8 million incurred when Colstrip Unit 4 was forced offline back in 2013 due to a plant malfunction. Originally, Northwestern wanted to charge its customers $8.2 million for replacement power costs while Unit 4 was idled. But two years ago, in a 3-2 decision, the Montana PSC disallowed those charges, ruling that the utility had not demonstrated that the plant was operated prudently. The PSC also faulting Northwestern for its lack of oversight of the plant and concluded it failed to purchase insurance or seek damages from other parties involved. Today, Yellowstone County District Judge Rod Souza upheld the commission's findings on each point. Commissioner Roger Koopman of Bozeman says today's ruling sends an important message, quote, these utilities cannot automatically assume expenses like these will be passed on to ratepayers. The burden of proof, he says, is on the utility to prove that it acted responsibly. In this case, Northwestern did not. And Commission Vice Chairman Travis Cavula says today's ruling sets an important precedent. Quote, this ruling establishes a clear precedent that there are times when the utility must take responsibility when its property fails to perform. It cannot simply hide behind contractors or other third parties to avoid that responsibility. As yet tonight, no official reaction from Northwestern. I spoke with spokesman Tom Glanzer, who told me company officials are just learning of the decision and are now in the process of reading and understanding the judge's ruling. Finally, a meeting of the minds over the cleanup of more than a century's worth of mine waste in and around the city of Anaconda. City and county officials, along with representatives of the Atlantic Richfield Company, came to an agreement just hours before a court-ordered deadline. MTN's John Amy reports now on the next step in this Superfund cleanup. After 30 years of coming up with a plan to clean up the mining contamination around Anaconda, a consent decree has finally been reached after some serious negotiations. For the last week, we were pretty much locked in a room, all parties involved together, and said, uh, come out when you reach a conclusion. A general conclusion has been reached in a consent decree between the EPA, the state, Anaconda, and the Atlantic Richfield Company in how to clean up more than 9,000 acres of contamination left by the mining activities of Atlantic Richfield Company. This is huge. Um, CD is something that many Superfund areas will never reach because um, it is an agreement. A lot of times people can't find that middle ground. This consent decree has been three decades in the making, but Anacondans will still have to remain in the dark on some of the details, at least for now. This is not my decision. Uh, I wish it was. If so, I'd try to release every detail I could, but uh, we've been given very strict instructions that uh, until we get the permission from the, the court system, we, we need to be very careful with what we do release. EPA officials will be in Anaconda this week to release some details about the next steps in the cleanup. In Anaconda, John Amy, MTN News. Thank you, John. John tells us there's a public meeting set for tomorrow night at the Anaconda High School Theater where the public will be briefed about the next important steps in the cleanup process. The vision of the One Big Sky District Development Project for downtown Billings should be clear by the end of this year. Local business groups today met with the Hamas Company to hear about a timeline for the plan. Now, One Big Sky has seen a drastic change from the original concept of a major skyscraper and community living space. Today, the vision is more of two distinct areas, a lifestyle district seen here in blue, anchored by a convention center and a health and wellness district that includes the Billings Medical Corridor. Once the development plan is finished, it'll be time to find out what direction the city wants to go. The city and the state are going are to be brought to a point where a decision has to be made. A decision will be made to support a vision, make an investment, drive to the future, create a plan and a strategy that can greatly grow and strengthen the economic base of the city and the region. The alternative will be not to support that, not to buy into the vision, not to have a plan, and I would argue, as with most cities in the country today, 
having no plan for the future is going to result in dire economic circumstances. Now, if all goes according to plan, the first catalyst project, like a downtown convention center, could break ground in 2019. In Great Falls, inmates at the Cascade County Detention Center rioted for some four hours Saturday. Sheriff Bob Edwards says 43 inmates were involved in the riot that started around 11 a.m. Saturday morning. Cascade County Sheriff deputies and a special SWAT team unit were involved in regaining control of the jail and defusing the riot. By about 3 Saturday afternoon, the uprising had been put down and order had been restored. Sheriff Edwards says there were no injuries, but there was serious damage done to the building. He estimates the cost of repairs could be well over $10,000. Just last week, Edwards announced the jail in Cascade County will no longer accept nonviolent offenders due to overcrowding issues. As of today, there are 488 inmates housed in the Cascade County Detention Center. For the second year in a row, a Montana team will compete in the National CrossFit Games in Madison, Wisconsin. Tonight, Q2's Jenny Fick shows us how the team is preparing for this ultimate test. The CrossFit Games are the culmination of the CrossFit season, which involves hundreds of thousands of competitors worldwide. 600 and something teams and regionals, and it's narrowed down to 40 worldwide, so we're one of the 40. Athletes first compete in the Open, then regionals, and then the final teams advance to the Games. It's a, it's a dream come true. I think combined for us, it's been 20 plus years of training. It's been something that we've all been training for for a very long time. This team is the first and only team from Montana to qualify for the CrossFit Games. The level of competition is, is absolutely fierce uh, at the CrossFit Games. It's, it's like unlike anything I've ever seen before. The team consists of four members and one alternate. In, in CrossFit with these games, the idea is to be prepared for the unknown and the unknowable. The majority of the workouts that they will compete in are kept secret until shortly before they participate. Touch on swimming, biking, running, um, the barbell, heavy lifting, um, the worm for the team, sled pushes, drags, sprints, there's an obstacle course. Get briefed on what the workout's going to be minutes before you go through it. And so that brings a level of anxiety to, to the table when you're competing. So the team has kicked up their training a notch. Yeah, it went 24 hours straight of training. Up at Lake Elmo, we were swimming at 3 a.m. carrying what's called the worm, um, which is like a 400 pound apparatus that we have to do around the lake a mile and a half and swimming around the lake and biking. And so I would say it's been very, very intense. <laughs> the games will test the top 40 men, 40 women, and 40 teams. The great thing about a team is that we all can rely on each other when we are struggling. We have another three people that are gonna be there to cheer us on and keep us going. In Billings, Jenny Fick, MTN News. Thank you, Jenny. The games run August 1st through the 5th, coming up next month. Still to come on tonight's 530 News, this building may have burned to the ground, but its memories have never been put out. In tonight's Q2 Rewind, we remember the Skyline Club in Billings. And in sports tonight, one rides bulls, the other raises them. Scott Breen takes us inside the PBR with Matt Triplett and his dad. And coming up in weather with a little bit of smoke in the air today, we are kind of in between the cool stuff and the hot stuff. It's a transitional day. We'll talk about how hot it's going to get coming up in a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.